Hello and welcome to this gameplay guide review for Factorio. Now if you don't know what Factorio is, the clue is in the name, but there's a little bit more to it than just factories. This game is as as much as about the logistics of mining materials, supplying factories, getting the factories to create the right things to move on to other factories, and it involves the sort of RTS components that you kind of get from what used to be the old Command and Conquer style of the games, and the graphics are very similar to that style and genre. Now, it's you and some monsters, basically, but that's it about, at the moment, it is early access, so it's work in progress, as with most of the games that I play and, just, and show. Um, so, I'll get in the map, and I'll get a setup sorted out, and uh, we can take it a little from there. But before I do that, I want to show you around the main menu because uh, this is a multiplayer game, and I've actually played quite a bit of this with my my good good friend Dragonbait, and uh, we're currently in quite 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 a way, a few hours into a game, and uh, we're we're getting there. We've done pretty much the research because that's what you're ending up doing is you're supplying. Um, equipment and making cogs and circuit boards and metal plates and this that and the other to create what's called science packs now they actually in the game at the moment look like potions but you use these potions in research you research higher uh, versions of what you've already got or new things so that you can better do logistics better supply your um, factories with the materials that they need and you move on in technology, blah, 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 blah. I don't know what the end game is at the moment. Um, I've seen on the video a rocket. Maybe that's the point. But, uh, yeah, so you the campaign does come through with... Um, <clears throat> oh, there's a, a few different bits and pieces. Uh, but there's a single-player campaign. Or under the multiplayer campaign modes, you can do uh, for your host a scenario... So you've got some different scenarios there, so you play versus player, generalized sandbox, uh, supply challenge, team production, web defense. So you'll be defending yourself against the the monsters. Now there is only one type of monster in the game at the moment, maybe more will be added at a later date. But um, we play in one of the uh, sandbox modes at the moment and uh, we're trying to work our way through the technology tree at the moment. Right, so I'll get up and running and uh, we will have a look at how to get started. Okay, so in free play mode, the, the task is to launch the space rocket, like I thought. Uh, to do this, you have to construct the rocket silo, which means you have to get down the technology tree. And basically, uh, by launching a rocket with a satellite, you'll need to research advanced technology in order to unlock the rocket silo. Start small, work your way up with the automation, and don't forget to protect yourself from the natives. Now, I've set this on easy mode. The monsters in the game won't attack first. However, if you do a lot of industrial stuff, which you will be doing, eventually the monsters will start to attack, and you will get a little message telling you so. Right. I'm going to just quickly get started off here. I'm going to find a quick place to... And so, important ingredients to start off with are iron. Uh, water is also very useful. There's a really tiny amount of coal there. Not really enough to work with. Stone is also very important to start off with, as is copper. So, we've got some stone there. Some mm, Another small amount of coal. Not particularly useful. As you can see on the map, if I just go up here, we should find some copper and some iron. Uh, it's not looking good for coal at the moment, though, because you will need those to start off with. It's this flickering thing over here. Ah, there we go, coal. Right, okay, so this looks like a decent place to start. We've got some iron over here on the left. Gold, as you can see if I zoom in, little character. You can zoom in out quite a way as well. So we've got coal, we've got iron, stone, and two lots of copper. All right, okay, so this is actually a good place to start a base. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is get some of this, cop this coal. 
Um, we will also need the copper and the iron we will need to get going and to start off we will need to get some burners together with some stone. So, pressing the E key uh, I need to create myself an iron axe. That's how you get started and now I can mine some of this stone. Now handily what you also start off with is a an initial burner here stone furnace and a milling mining machine right so what you can do to get yourself started as we go over i'll show you how to use that if you place the burner miner notice the arrow the yellow arrow on it you want it to be facing your stone furnace now you can see that they have a flashing icon on saying hey look I've got no fuel. All right, so in order to gather that, you wander over to your coal field. There it is. And you mine coal. Very boring. It is very difficult to get started, it has to be said. But once you get going, you can start doing the whole automation thing where you've got uh, lots and lots and lots of different. Um, electric mining machines and we'll get to that but first off you need if we say we need more of that you see we need some a boiler and we will see that's the burning noise that's the next one up we also need the offshore pump that comes from the that's why the water is important and because we'll use that to create our electricity uh, with the steam engine to start off with and then with advancing the technology you get solar panels, nuclear power some of the other bits and pieces that we can create, oh, there's the science packs I was talking about and of course the all important weapons, you will need weapons but it's all about logistics and I will explain this as we go along I'm going to get this going to start off with, just, uh, just to show you quickly get some more coal and what we'll do is we'll run up here quickly as you see it's gone dark okay so we have our burner and we have our mining machine burner mining driller and we need to fill, fill them with uh, coal so we've mined some coal so we left click on it right click to take half of the coal that we have in our inventory and uh, put that in and as you can see it starts churning out iron ore now in the burner do the same put the fuel in and the way this works is the miner feeds the burner and then using the coal it creates iron plates uh, and that's the basic crux of that from there it's all about logistics it's all about getting things up and running and automated and that's what the game is mostly about but then you have different levels of difficulty and depending on what you set that to depends on how often you get attacked by the natives so I'm going to get a few bits up and running them together and then we can start showing some of the automation parts so see you in a minute <laughs> Okay, so I've been back and forth a few times, and uh, I now can collect some of those. So I've got the iron plate that I'm collecting from there, and I've got some copper plate coming from there. Right, so what I need to do is create myself some power, and the way we're going to do that is to use all the water. So we've got the uh, lake over here, so if I just quickly run over here quickly being your pretty well, it's getting dark it does get dark quite quick right so the first thing we need is an offshore pump so we're going to need one of them as you can see all I'll have to do is click on it and it will build everything I need to build and it tells you how many you can build with the number inside the little box so I need one and it appears in my inventory here and these are all the spots where I can put it now you can see the little blue arrow points where it's actually going to output the water that it's going to do. Now the water never seems to run out at the moment uh, and what we will need is also we will need a boiler once again you can see it making the bits it needs 
so you eventually end up with a boiler. You don't have to make those separate parts. It's intelligent enough to do that for you at the moment. So we're going to put our boiler down, and as you can see with the boiler, the boiler also has three outputs. Now, the ones on the side, pressing R, spins it around. <clears throat> the ones on the side are water inputs, whereas the one on this side, at the bottom, is a steam output, and it's that what we're interested in. So what we're going to do is just going to just going to plunk it there. I wonder if I can just put it there just for a laugh. Maybe. But you can see the symbols if I zoom in, you can see that water comes out, water comes in, steam comes out, so you can put more water in there. So what I now need to do is build my steam engine. And down here you can see it's slowly wearing away. There we go, right. And I may have to use pipe work for this, I don't know, uh, but again, we need fuel, but once we've had fuel to this, it will start sucking the water in, pushing the steam into there, and then that will start generating the power we need. Now from there, it's a case of creating um, electric poles to get the electricity to where we need it to go, and we'll look at that in a minute. In the meantime, I need to mine more coal, and uh, we'll get this up and running. Okay, so I've been and got some more coal, and I've actually made a decision that I'm actually going to space this out a bit, because I don't particularly want this um, uh, boiler and steam engine just there. I think I would much prefer it lower down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build some pipes, and I'm actually going to demonstrate these ones, and how to use them. Very useful. Burn a few, and to pick these up, I'm just right clicking up. I come All right. So, pipe work to start off with. What I'll do is do the underground pipe work. So, using R, turn it to the way I want it. I need to be near to it, and then you just stretch it along. And there is a distance that will go, that's as far as it will go, and then the water will come down and come out here. Right, well that's is that close enough, far enough along? Oh, maybe another couple of spots. Right, you can see that it's, with the blue icon on the side, you can see that there's actually water in it. So that's good. So we need water in. Like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pipe on the end here. Because at a later date, I might want to split it off. So it's quite intelligent, it's made a T-piece, but you don't need one at the moment. Uh, I'm going to put that on there, like so, and then to get this going, what I'm going to do is just put some coal in there. So I'll take half of that and bring it in, and sure enough, we it will produce steam and we will end up with power. See so steam, you see on the right hand side you can see the steam, and you can see that it will supply power when we need it. Now the problem we have here is we have something which requires coal to create electricity which means we need to get a coal supply which we currently don't have and that's what I'm going to be setting up next. Now handily I've actually got some coal here look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a, an electric mining drill so hopefully, did that just make one? Where did that go? Maybe not. There we go. Right. So what we're going to do with an electric mining drill is so I'm just going to put it on this here. Right. So there we go. Right, it's not going to do anything at the moment because, funnily enough, it needs power. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some transport belts and this will literally, where that yellow arrow is, drop off some coal. I'm going to... It's getting dark. There are lights in the game. Right, so, just drop that down there 
uh, then, then actually turn it around using the R key and oh that was, that was just about right and then what I need is an inserter build an inserter also needs electricity and I'm going to put that turning it you see the arrow that's what it's going to do it's going to say we need the bar at the back where it's going to pick things up and the arrow where we want it to go and we're going to place that down on the left click of the mouse right okay so we still have one problem and that is we don't have enough any wood to build telegraph poles or electricity pylons so we're going to cut down a couple of trees deforestation and I'm going to build on my E key a couple of those because as you can see from the flashing icons I need electricity from here from the power station to the inserter and up to the electric miner so we put our electricity there our electricity there and our electricity here no that's too far away let's pick it up with the left as long as that miner is inside the blue area, if I zoom in you can see that, it will have power. And there we go, and you'll see that the coal, and this is what I like about this game, you actually see the things on the belts moving around. Now watch the inserter, picks it up, puts it in there, let's get rid of that, and it will create power. As you can see the performance coming up and how much steam it has. And as you can see, things are backing up on the belt, which means we have a good supply for what we need. Now we could pick other bits off of that belt, make another belt, make another another steam bob boiler and another steam engine. Or we could split off the steam from here into another steam engine. Uh, so let's do that quickly. Uh, I don't have enough plates for it, so I need gears and I need more iron plates. But you could put in a splitter here, just put another pipe on the end, down there turn it round with the R key maybe oh, I'll just turn it over there and then put another spoiler just there so you have even more power right okay so that's getting started that's getting your power up and running that's supplying coal to your boiler it's how to use the underground tube and the pipe work and how that works in itself uh, and how to get yourself set up and started. Now we need iron and what we'll do is we'll create more of these electric drillings machine, electric mining machines and we will start getting iron and copper going so that we can then start producing the things that we want to produce and we can start thinking about getting the tech tree going. So what we'll be doing is replacing these burner mining drills for the electric ones and settings ourselves up with a good supply of copper and iron ore but I need to do some work on that to start off with so I'll get that moving and I'll see you in a few minutes right so I've moved things along and I've created myself some electric mines now I don't have power at the moment I will power them but I want to get my supply chain running first now I've got two, four for each, so I've got four on the copper, four on the iron and four on the coal. However, I don't want to create just lots of belts all over the place so that I end up with uh, one belt transporting one goods. What I want is one belt transporting two lots of goods uh, because the way that this works in Factorio is you can use both sides of the belt. It doesn't just carry one item at a time, one after the other after the other. Now uh, if I sh go up here you'll see what I mean. Now you may have noticed earlier in the video that on this conveyor belt up here as you can see I've been sorting up a supply chain of it. Uh, you can see that the coal is supplied only onto one side of the belt and we can utilize the other side and that's what I'm planning to do and the way that I'm going to do that I and mean, there's a couple of ways that I could do it I could use the inserters to do that that they always put it on the off side of the belt that's always worth remembering or I could just put the belt here in a specific way and uh, as you can see I've been a bit busy with my belts 
and before we power things up so we got the bottom one's going to the right so the top one's going to come to the left and what I'm going to do is just going to bend it round for the time being round there and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go past I'm going to turn it and then turn it again oh damn it that's not what I want to do do that then another one then turn it so you can see that the belt then feeds on so what that will do is it'll come around the back the iron ore will be put on the inside of the belt and it'll come round on the inside of the belt and then when this belt comes round to the other side ore will come from these two onto the inside of the belt and from those two on the outside of the belt so we will have one belt carrying two lots of goods at the same time now I'm going to do that with the copper and I'm going to do that with the coal and then I'm going to get it set up and I'm going to get it to a point now the reason there is a good reason for doing this and the reason for doing this is I only want to supply uh, I can only supply two sides of a belt if that makes any sense and you'll see what I mean with the burners you've got four sides and you need to utilize three of them one will pull bits in and the other will pull bits off if that makes any sense so you've got two bits coming and one bit coming off and you can't keep doing that with what you've got so far so um, I might actually rejig this and actually have two lines anyway um, so that I've got uh, I can then amalgamate the coal and the iron and the coal and the copper so that I can then yeah I'll work it out and I will show you when I've worked it out but that is a neat trick if you want to get things on the other side of the belt you can just do that or you can use the inserter to uh, up here so the inserter puts it onto the other side of the belt and then when it comes around you just join it on and then it will be on the off side of the belt but that's really useful uh, and I'll perhaps demonstrate that in a second. I will just set up some power and you'll see what I mean. Right, so slight rejig, so I can put a power supply in the middle and power all four with just one supply. As you can see, they'll kick off, and you'll see that the iron ore comes in the middle on the one side. If I just spread that out over there. So the iron ore at the top gets put on the inside, travels around, and then because I've put this kink in it, it's feeding the other side of the belt, and I'm getting double the supply on one belt. And that's really useful, because you can't don't just have to do this with iron. What you can do, is if I just get rid of this, because I don't particularly want these to carry on, is I can supply iron ore on one side, and coal on the other. And then the, ins the inserter, these grabber arm things, will pick off from both sides of the belt and feed a stone furnace. So it can feed a stone furnace, one side with iron, the other side with coal, and you've got all the materials you need to make the iron plate. Now, we can supply that down to the burners, and then we also have the, the option of pulling it off to the other side and feeding a belt with multiple burners from you know so one belt's feeding multiple burners then multiple burners are producing iron plates and then we have a good supply I'll get that set up and you'll see what I mean so now what you can see here is I've got six iron ore miners and what they've done is they've filled up the belt and I've put the belt so everything is on the left hand side so all the raw materials are on the left hand side and I've done the same with the coal quickly nip over here you can see I've fed it with electricity and I've got four coal suppliers there miners supplying coal on this side of the belt and right here at this point it starts feeding one belt with two sides now with the power down here and some of the inserters that I've made what I can do is I can start putting those materials into the burners. As you see, all of those burners are now well fed from the coal and the iron 
and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six burners, all of which are producing iron plate. Now that's really useful. Unfortunately, uh, what's going to happen at some point is that's going to reach 100 and then it's going to stop producing stuff. So what I need to do now is offload it and this is why you need to feed one side and take off the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a belt uh, and I could actually put this up in the other direction. If I wanted I could do what I like with it. Uh, I think I could probably do with some more of those at some point but just for demonstration purposes using the last inserter that I have what I do is I put that there that needs power so let's put some power over there and as you can see it now starts feeding another belt. Now notice here that this particular inserter instead of putting it on the near side it's actually putting it on the off side which once again you can use to your advantage just like you can use this one. Now some of the feeders will feed or some of these inserters or extractors will put it on both sides of the belt but if you put one of those there then there you've got quite a good supply and what you could do is you could amalgamate them into one stream so that you could place the belt so uh, you, you can offset it but that would be really complicated and you need to do some research to start off with and research will be in the series of the next topic um, because once you've got the iron plate going and you've got your copper plate going which is the next thing that I need to do so I haven't done that yet is I need to then start using these materials that I'm making I should say that you actually travel along the conveyor belts, that's really cool um, is once you've actually got these materials going off you need to make sure that the copper you're making the copper plate which is fine, so you need a setup like that with for the copper plate uh, you need the iron plate like we have you will use the copper plate to make copper wire you will also use the copper wire and the copper plate to make a circuit board you will use the iron plate to make cogs and then combining the more iron plate the cogs and the circuit board you will create inserters and the inserters weirdly enough are one of the ingredients into a pack and this is where the whole thing gets messy so the green one which comes at a later date and there are blue ones and other things as you see you need to create transporter belts and an inserter to create one of the science packs for those ones you need copper plate and a cog so not only are you needing to create two sets of cogs one for the green um, science pack and one for the red science packs you also need copper plate twice as well so you need copper plate for the uh, the red one and you need copper plate when you're making the um, inserter because it needs it for the circuit board and then it needs the circuit board so you need three sets of copper plate so this is where it starts getting a logistical bit, a bit of a nightmare right so we now have our supply of iron plate and copper plate and we've got quite an abundance of it coming in that's really useful for us but now we need to move on to the next stage which is starting research and to start off we actually need to start with one of the most basic ones and that's automa automation now that gives us factories but in order to make factories in order to do the research we actually need a red potion so once we've learned that we will learn factories and long-handed inserter so we'll set that as our research but we've got a bit of a problem we can't actually create the red potions or sorry the red science packs without um, the iron gear and the copper plate but we don't have any iron gears we have to make them and to do that we use some of the iron plate that we've already gathered now as you can see I've got 30 red potions so what I will do is with a bit of luck I've got enough to make a research lab so what I'll do is I'll just plop my research lab down and stick the 30 potions in it and see whether that completes the automation uh, as you can see it's making copper cables and circuit boards and then eventually it will create us a lab 
Oh, I'm going to plunk it str uh, straight down there where it's got some power. And I'm going to put into it the 30 potions I was because I've picked up those right. Okay, so I'm going to make 15. So, more iron plate. Stand near there. So I can pick it straight off the cover about just like that by pressing it. And then oh, I'm short on copper plate, so copper plate. Pick up copper plate. No shortage of that at the minute, which is good. I think this is actually the best setup I've had in some time. It's just a bit convoluted with all the conveyor belts because of the spaced out uh, resource. Right, I can make 60 of those. So I, if I just right click, I'll make five at a time. So if I make that many, uh, and I'll wait for those to process, and then we'll bug them into this research unit and see whether the, how, how many we need for automation. And it should say we need, oh, we only need 10. That's handy. So 10 should give us the automation we need. So I've got three, so uh, I'll be back in a second. Let's just wait for those to complete. Right, so we now have enough um, science packs to complete. As you can see, it starts using them, and the green bar on the automation kit goes up. Now, apparently, this should use 10, so it shouldn't take that long. And once that research is complete, we'll then be able to research the next thing, which will be mm, electronics. And electronics will take 30 potions. Sorry, packs. I keep, can't get it out of my head that they're potions purely because they do look like potions. I keep thinking I'm playing an RPG, and I'm not. It's an RTS. Honest, gov. So, yeah. Okay, we'll wait for that to complete. Back in a second.